Hey guys, welcome to another mini swarm video here today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can update the microcode for your processor on your mini swarm in Proxmox. Um, so after reading, you know, a few things and my server actually freezing up on me um, twice in like the last like four or five days, I figured I need to probably do some updates. Um, the BIOS is currently already updated to the latest version that many forms um, put out on the website. Um, so I can't do update update any of that. Although I did see in a few threads that um, if you reach out to the support, they might uh, give you a beta version that might help. Mainly because I'm running the 96 gigs of RAM and not the 64 gigs. <laughs> um, and I'm hoping that's not the case that, that that's it. But I did see that my microcode was um, not as up to date as it could be. Um, so we're going to go for that. And our, obviously the process kind of was a little bit more tedious and trying to figure out how to do it was a lot harder than I was expecting. Um, so we'll make a video about that in case you guys run into this situation as well. Um, so we'll be essentially showing you how you can do it in Proxmox, which I think is probably the easiest way. And if you're probably running Proxmox, it shouldn't be too bad as well. So let's get started. All right, so you essentially got your Proxmox instance. Um, so there's, there's some documentation that essentially um, it updates. So if we look at firm, firmware updates Proxmox, um, I think there's a page in here that essentially tells you CPU microcode updates. Um, which actually probably is a, a good good thing to update anyways. But what we'll have here is the steps on how to do it. Um, so we'll essentially go through the steps and I'll kind of show you as I do it too. Um, so we'll enable the Debian firmware repository, um, which essentially states here that in our Etsy app source list, sources.list, we'll append the non-free firmware um, which they said to each of the Debian.org repository lines, um, which is kind of confusing when you look at it and I'll show you, I'll show you why. Um, but the first thing that we will actually want to do, um, unless you have enterprise, um, set up, you'll want to disable the enterprise one, uh, for both the PVE and the Ceph because essentially you won't be able to to do the YUM update because they were error out saying, hey, you're not authorized because you're not paying for enterprise, which I'm not. Um, I'm doing the community version. So you want to disable these, which is click on here. And then because this is already disabled, it will say this, uh, it says enable right now. Um, but for example, it will show disabled if it was already enabled. So you want to disable both of these. Then what you want to do is get into your shell over here. So what you want to do now is essentially follow the, the steps. So we will go to this so you can run editor here copy um we'll paste th paste that maybe paste <laughs> it didn't paste as well as i thought it was going to um but that's probably because I'm, I'm running windows and whatnot but we can look at editor so you can see that i have three things here and it's already added but yeah add it to the very end of each line so i added the non-free firmware to the end of each line here. Um, it wasn't there before, so you just have to add that. Pretty simple. Um, and then you'll hit Control X to save. Um, it might prompt you for a few other things because I didn't edit anything. It, it won't prompt me for it, but you can say yes to save and like enter to save the file name essentially. So from there, then we want to do an app clean and then app update. So it'll pull all the things. Uh, you need, and then you can see all the things that you need to update essentially. But what we'll be doing is because we have the i9, we'll use the Intel microcode. So we do app install Intel hyphen microcode, which I've already have it installed. So it won't do anything. Um, and I don't even remember what it was, uh, Intel hyphen microcode, Intel hyphen microcode. Um, so it's already there, so there isn't anything. But for you guys, um, if you don't have it installed, it will install it then. Um, and then the last step is to essentially reboot the VIA, uh, Proxmox host. Uh, I'm not going to reboot this in this video because I actually do got things running, um, and I don't want my family to yell at me here. Um, so, but you could reboot it by typing in at six after you shut off all your VMs and everything. Um, but after after all that is done. Um, you can essentially run this uh, command, 
Um, so grep microcode uh, slash proc CPU inf. Um, so grep microcode, which will just essentially grab grab all the instances of microcode in uh, Etsy CPU inf or oh, proc CPU inf. Sorry, proc CPU inf. Um, and then they had a unique, but I'll just output all the ones. So this will essentially show in all the microcodes what the version is. So I'm currently running 4121, um, which is the latest version that they're supporting. I was at like 410, I think, uh, or 4100 before the update. So you can see it change. You can run it before and then after the update, um, and hopefully it updates. So that is pretty much what you need to do to get your microcode updated um, when running Proxmox on your minis form. So I'm hoping now um, that's all I needed to do and that my server doesn't freeze up now um, because I don't really want to have to deal with that uh, in the future. So I'll keep you guys in tune uh, in regards to if this actually solves the issue um, or if I need to go reach out and get like a newer BIOS version. Um, so. Anywho, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!